Hello everybody, welcome to your fifth chapter in your Java E tutorial series. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about packaging. So in Java EE, there are lots of loose parts flying around. Some files are in Java code, some in XML, some deal with presentation while others deal with computation. How will Java EE make sense of all this? We need something that organizes everything into a package by their jobs. This is exactly what packaging does. So let me just show you what we have in store for you. So we have packaging applications, packaging enterprise beans, packaging web uh, archives, and packaging resource adapter archives. Okay, so let's get right into it. Whatever you write in Java EE, it will be packaged into one of three files, a Java archive file, a web archive file, or an enterprise archive file. In short, these are the jar, war, and ear files. These files allowed application to assemble the required files needed for any task at hand. So let's first take a look into our ear file. It contains Java modules, which are classes and stuff, and a deployment descriptor. A deployment descriptor is an XML file that has data about the data, metadata. Usually metadata is described in annotations, but it can also be done in here as well. As you'll see over here, there are two deployment descriptors. There's the Java EE and runtime. So the Java EE deployment descriptor or application.xml is for any deployment settings of the application while the runtime deployment descriptor glassfish application.xml is for deployment settings for the glassfish server. The Java modules are a collection of different kinds of classes like the EJB modules, the EJB classes, which are set in jar, the web modules, uh, which are servlets, X, HTMLs, etc., and these are held in WAR files. Application client modules, these are just simple class files, and they're held in jar files. And resource adapter modules, which are libraries and Java inter uh, interfaces, and these are held in the RAR files. Okay, so to package enterprise beans, this is how you would package enterprise beans in EJB jar or WAR modules. So an EJB jar file is portable and can be used for various applications. Enterprise beans often uh, provide the business logic of a web application. In these cases, packaging the enterprise bean within the web application's web module simplifies development and application organization and makes it a whole lot easier for you later on. So in the Java EE architecture, a web module is the smallest deployable and usable unit of web resources. A web module contains web components and static web content files, such as images, which are called web resources. Here's the structure of a web module. The top level directory, the document root, is where XHTML pages, client side classes and archives, and static web resources, images, are found. The document root contains a subdirectory named webinf, which can contain the following files and directories like classes, libraries, document develop, uh, de deployment descriptors like web.xml and ejbjar.xml. And a web module needs a web.xml file. If it uses JSF technology, uh, if it must specify certain kinds of security information, or if you want to override information specified by web component annotations. And finally, our resource adapter archives. A resource adapter archive, or RAR file, stores XML files, Java classes, and more files that help the application locate resources. And that is it. That's all there is about packaging in this tutorial. Um, so now that you understand why Java EE packages all these things, so it can easily retrieve stuff, and work through it efficiently. And now in the next tutorial, we'll be taking a look into the web tier. And specifically, we're, we're going to be talking about web applications. So until then, I will see you in the next video.